Good almost afternoon. Thanks everybody for joining us for this panel. How's everybody feeling? Right, that was kind of pathetic. How's everybody feeling? <laughs> okay, great, thank you so much. So we're going to be talking about for the next 20 minutes or so, the idea of creating um, a green future for us all, which is a very big and lofty goal, but we actually do have the money, we do have the solutions, and we have the brain power. Like many of you, I go to a lot of global conferences talking about climate, and there are a lot of sessions on climate finance and carbon markets and policy, which is critical. We absolutely need all of it. The issue being that governments take a really long time to get things done. So the next level of power is business. It's corporations. In addition to corporations being climate leaders through potentially reducing their emissions, they have an opportunity to lead in climate justice through the local communities and the nonprofits they partner with, which is something that Debbie and Nisha both have hands-on experience doing. Before we get into the questions around developing corporate partnerships with your respective nonprofits, Nisha, would you please give a little context on what your organization, dream.org, does? Absolutely. So, hi, I'm Nisha, the CEO at dream.org. And first of all, we dream. We dream of a world beyond poverty, beyond prisons, beyond polarization, and yes, beyond pollution. So we dream, but we also act. We are obsessed with solutions at scale. So I have a staff of phenomenal organizers, lobbyists, advocates, people just doing everything they can to change the world. We dream and we act. Thank you so much. So both of you have long time experience with your organizations partnering with corporate corporations. How did this begin to take shape for you and what are the main characteristics or culture fits that you're looking for when you're developing partnerships? You know, for, for, for us, um, we, this sort of happened um, sort of right time, right place. It was in 2001. Um, I was at uh, an event and I met the head of marketing for alternative fuel vehicles from Toyota. And um, at that point, um, the Prius had had a soft launch and then they were ready to re relaunch it in, in terms of a bigger campaign. I had taken over the, you know, the organization in 2000. I knew nothing about nonprofits and I knew nothing about the environment. Uh, but what I did know was when I saw this car, it screamed solutions. And it screamed, I can do this. It was really affordable. It looked like nothing else. And you didn't have to change your lifestyle. And so this, this wonderful gentleman who has since retired, um, uh, we shook hands. And I told him that I think that you know we could get Hollywood if, with this car. And I had no idea what I was talking about. But I just thought it sounded good. I, I'm dreaming, too. Um, it sounded really good. And then I, um, then that was my first experience with a corporation. And I will say that, you know, we went on to really help them, you know, launch the Prius and have Ho Hollywood be aware of it, bringing w along with my dear friend Mike Sullivan at LA Car Guy. He taught me how to be a car salesman. And we sold a lot of cars, and we we helped create the 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 vibe in the community that if you buy a Prius, you also must be carrying canvas bags when you go to the market. You be, it's your persona, and it actually informed me as as a CEO of an organization the benefits and the unbelievable you know solutions that come from working with a corporation. I didn't know how to do that before because I was so new at doing everything, but I will say that working with Toyota shaped the way that we function because we look for organizations who are like-minded and who are authentically on a sustainability path, and, and we want to be on that ride with them and do everything we can for them to be successful. Because the idea is to be successful and then have other companies want to do the same thing. Um, so that's sort of my very short answer. <laughs> <for this. laughs> Thank you. That was a massive campaign. I went out, got a Prius a few years after that. It was a massive campaign. It was. And I love that you touched on the corporate brand that Toyota was able to create through the Prius. 
you encourage people, people that were buying Prius to have like their own personal brand around environmentalism through yeah. that. And I definitely made people feel guilty if they wouldn't do it. <laughs> they, you, what kind of a person are you if you're not driving this car? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So Nisha, so you've had a number of really huge partnerships with corporate philanthropy, also with more str strategic endeavors. And you recently had a partnership, or maybe it wasn't recent, 2018, the NFL. Can you talk a little bit about that and how you decided to forge that partnership and what the, what the strategy was there? Sure. I, it's baked into the culture at dream.org. We will work with absolutely anyone to make a future that works for everyone. It's a motto, it's a slogan, I can say it in my sleep. But it's really true that I was a little kid that was left out and left behind. I grew up in Georgia in the 80s. I was definitely an outsider and outside the norm of what existed there. And I just got that fighting spirit for social justice from a young age. And um, I was going to make sure no one felt left out and left behind in the future that I wanted to create. So I've always been fighting for the underdog. Thank you. And, you know, I found myself arrested over a dozen times as a young college activist and doing anything I can to make the world a better place. But in finding solutions where people aren't left out and left behind, we don't want to create new solutions that leave new groups out. At the center of everything we do is equity. Don't get me wrong, I want to look at the groups that have been traditionally left out and marginalized, but I do not want to do that if it excludes other folks. I believe everyone is part of the solution. At the heart of our corporate partnerships is that, that you have a role, you have a place. And if there is anything we agree on, and it's about a shared goal, not necessarily a shared value, if we have a shared goal, I'm going to work with you because we need you to be part of the solution. For us, we don't believe anything in the future green economy um, that exists, and I know a lot of folks have spoken on this already, but we can solve poverty and pollution at the same time. And that means we need the corporate sector. We need jobs. We need folks to think about, if I'm making green jobs, who's going to be in these green jobs? And so corporate corporations that reach out, what is it we're going to work on together? Let's do that. They always have a place. And I was telling uh, Melissa backstage about our NFL partnership because it came in 2017-2018, and we heard about it on the news before we actually heard about it on from the NFL, that they were going to give us a giant check. I, VN, I'm sure you're in the audience, you remember. Uh, VN was our CEO at the time, so I'm very glad that she is here. And we heard about it in the news before <laughs> we heard about it ourselves. And it was part of, it was after Kaepernick took a knee, and we all know what happened. And for us, the heat we got from the left, our people was, if you take their money, you are going to be saying it's okay what they did. You are going to be anti-protest. You're gonna be anti for free speech. They are the version of greenwashing for, for racism. You are going to be allowing your name, your good name to accept what they've done. And that is not how we saw it, sure. We had great discussions on staff where some people did see it that way. But for us, this was the largest donation any corporation had made to social justice at that time. And that, I believe, paved the way for a lot of companies to do the same thing. Social justice is the most underfunded area of philanthropy. And I think by the NFL doing that, they never asked us to say what they did was okay. They never asked us about any of, we stayed true to who we are, they stayed true to who they were, and I think it paved the way for a lot more donations, a lot more philanthropy to go that route. So yes, we will work with you and we will. So you bring up such an important point around greenwashing because that is obviously a huge narrative in the climate movement and something that Reverend Yearwood touched on was we're all working toward the same goal, right? To, to stay at 1.5 or <laughs> below and to, to lower our emissions. But we, we all have different approaches, all these different subgroups. You've got the youth movement, you've got indigenous elders, you've got carbon markets, you've got climate finance, you've got ESG, you've got CSR. And that's only about five of the groups <laughs> that I saw at COP28 last year. But there is a lot of concern around greenwashing, which also can be very divisive and polarizing and can be a PR nightmare for some organizations. How do you address that if there is a company that maybe was in the news in the last few years and they were, they were accused of either direct greenwashing or inadvertent greenwashing? You mean if they approach us and say, we want to support you? Yeah. 
Well, I mean, I do think that you have to look at what it was. If it is a company that has absolutely nothing in its DNA that, that speaks to sustainability, and they did a whole campaign about something that has no relevance to the practices, then that's a problem. However, if you've got a company that has the motivation to move forward on solutions and maybe acknowledge that there's things that they don't know or that they're not that they haven't even thought of to to begin that process, then that's where I think we agree it's open arms. Like let's dig in and let's have you go from maybe, you know, a toddler version of being a sustainable company to really embracing that and again support the fact that we want the company to be successful. Everything is role modeling and everything is competition as well. So if you are if you if you are a, a company that makes, you know, products for babies, you want to make sure that those products are the have the least toxins in them are you know the most successful marketing campaign because you don't want any other products to be as successful as that one and whether it's uh, you know hair products or cleaning products whatever it is you really want to support like we were talking about in the automotive world we want to support the people who have a serious motivation to move forward and to do things in a way that will be more conscious and i think you know I still think people would think, oh, you're greenwashing a company. Like, I don't care. You know, like, we're going to support who we understand really will benefit from this. Yeah, absolutely. It's do you want to make a point or do you want to make progress? A million. Pr this is why we're friends, by the way. <laughs> I know. I'm so lucky, too. I got Debbie on my panel. It's very exciting. Uh, that's, that's it for me. I'm a progressive because I want to make progress. And for me, I don't want to be judged by mistakes of my past. I've certainly made quite a few, as most people here have. And if you are trying to get better and do something a little better, which was also a theme earlier today, a little better every day, I'm there with you. I want to be there with you and help you along. I was a young baby organizer. Everything I did as an activist, what I learned was um, I can yell out data and facts about what's happening to the environment and what your, this was me, is what your meat eating is doing to the world. That was exactly how I was in high school, if you want to know what I was like. Um, you got shamed a lot if you knew me. I could do it that way because I had the facts and figures behind me. But what moved people more, and every organizer knows this, is relationships. It is all relationships. If I can sit with you and get to know you and I be me, what, like I said, I am a progressive, I don't hide that. But if I allow whoever I'm sitting next to to be wholly them, which is different than me, we will build a relationship and we will grow together. And that's what I care about, just a little bit more every day. People change because of who they know, not necessarily because of all of the facts pointing them to do something differently. So I'm about building those relationships. And, and who's running the corporations? They're people. Exactly. They have kids. They've got families. I think that you have to look past the, the sort of, you know, the, the, the view of always thinking that there's a, a hero and a villain. And I think that you can really move the needle, I, I will say, faster if you're dealing with companies who want to be successful than waiting for bills to pass. I was involved with the plastic bag ban in Los Angeles, in California, for a million years before it passed. And then it didn't pass again, and someone killed it. And I mean, I hate to like say this, but if you're successful with a product, with a corporation, you're successful. And no one's gonna come and say, oh no, I don't think you guys should really buy that anymore. So I think that understanding that people in business, ultimately, you have to think this, want to do the right thing for their, for their own lives. I think that that's a really different lens to look at things and really try, as Nisha said, to work with people, get a relationship, and then let's everybody do better. And let's have everybody sort of move in a way that's gonna benefit society as well as becoming you know, more successful for your board members or the bottom line. Yeah, absolutely. And, 
And transitions make time. I mean, take time. The clean energy transition is going to take a very long time. And, and large corporations transitioning and using different methods and, and looking at their product cycles differently, that's going to take some time. It doesn't some mean people that they do don't it have goodwill. And then, right, and some people yeah. don't want to do it. Some companies are not don't, in, the, you know, in the mindset to do, do that um, work that takes the time. But so many are. And so that's have the thing that we have to look at. Have either of you been noticing more large corporations approaching you through the, either their CSR campaigns or ESG and looking how where there might be alignment with your organizations? And have you noticed any shifts or evolutions in how corporate America is changing when it comes to their approach to climate and their, their approach to partnerships? And it, does it seem like it's getting more embedded in their DNA? Yes. And no, I think that it is better for the bottom line for most companies to be thinking about how are their products green, how are they having environmental sustainability, where are their investments going. Obviously, that is becoming good business to do. And companies will keep doing that, some companies, right? They will get on that kick. They're thinking about how do I maximize value for shareholders, and this is one way to do it. We will be there for you and help you along that path. The no part is that it's getting really hard to put your neck out there right now in this environment on anything. So we have companies who used to be loud and proud are now being quieter and don't want to advertise what good they are doing. Even for the environment, definitely racial justice has taken a turn down where folks don't want to put their, their neck out there around that. But yes, on the environment too. They get told, are you being too woke? You, the, the myth that it's not maximi maximizing shareholder value is coming back. And so we do have to combat that with narrative and storytelling for sure. But we also just need to be there and make it safe and provide cover. And so big companies that can be loud, thank you, everyone here that is a sponsor, that can be loud about what they're doing, do it. It helps the other ones it, come out. I will say that the as you know, as we've heard a lot this morning about the entertainment industry and the studios and the streamers, I I think that the the progress that we've made in being able to talk about it. I remember, you know, years ago, we would have a lot of support from the studios, but they would be like, shh, don't, don't say anything, because if we're not perfect, we're gonna get slammed in the press. And I would, I would argue, and I'm like, but you guys are doing so good. Let's really scream about it, because then what we do in Hollywood is going to be replicated in other industries if we can do that. And there's been unbelievable progress with that. I mean, I, I do think that the industry understands that perfection is is not attainable, but pro but process is amazing and applauded. And the process has been so great in that sector. But um, I agree with what you're saying in terms of it's it is a weird time in our world. But I would say that sustainability is I think we're still on a really good road in terms of being able to talk about it. And I do think that the companies who do tell the story and work with nonprofits like us are the ones that will get noticed more because people, people don't want to do the work. People want to have somebody else say, these are the companies where you could buy your diapers. This is the company that you could buy, you know, your, your whatever it is. And I think that, and I get that asked all the time, just, t just tell me what to buy. <laughs> I'm, I don't want to think about it. And I'm like, well, first of all, do you know how to read a label? If like you can't you know, pronounce something, you probably shouldn't be buying it. But even then, so I think that sustainability, I think is, we are, we are moving forward with that. That's not something that we need to be quiet about. And I think it's an amazing time in the business world and in the corporate world for being people being receptive to embracing the process and also being able to allow us to tell the story, which is more than we've ever had before. Yeah, I love that you brought up process. What did you say earlier? Perfection is not attainable, but process is um, something. It was something. really phenomenal. Let's it was really yeah. we'll, we'll find out. <laughs> process is, proce the process is a beautiful thing and yeah. we need the process. Yeah. That's part of the storytelling. That's how we right. build more solidarity across right. the climate movement. So we only have 44 seconds, 43 seconds left. Really quickly, what advice can you give to any community organizers or nonprofits out there that want to partner with corporations? Any advice on vetting corporations, on what to look for when forging strategic partnerships? 
Absolutely. I think the most important thing is know your values. What are the values of your organization? What are the things that matter to you most? And that is an area where you don't compromise on. You don't get into a partnership where that is asked to compromise on. But you don't ask them to compromise on their values either. So I think the thing that's most important is stick with what you know, be open. That means when they come to the table, they can be completely who they are values-wise. If the most important thing at that corporation is maximizing money, which you know I think that actually is the charter of every corporation everywhere, honor that. That might not be your value, but how can you respect what they need and they figure out what you need? It can be a mutually beneficial partnership. So knowing yourself before you go to the table and allowing them to come to the table exactly who they are, that's the most important part for me. Totally agree. And it has to be a win-win. You, you have to um, believe in what they're doing, and they have to believe in what you're doing, and know that you're both stronger by working together. And then you can have a, how many years have you been in partnership with Toyota now? Next year is 25. 25 year <laughs> partnership with Toyota, that's to be applauded. Thank you both for your time. Thank you everybody for joining us for the session. And I think the next panel is gonna come up next.